What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Dust Two Double Doors Podcast. Um, a week ago, Liam, you and I were freaking out. Counter Strike Two dropped like the two hours before we were supposed to do the show. Uh, now we've had a week to see it. Now we've had a week to kind of go over everything, which is good. So we're going to get to that. Uh, the most pressing thing that we probably have, which is starting halfway through this show, is going to be uh, Showdown, which is like a surprisingly big event with a lot of big teams that is then leading into the RMR. Um, so we have a lot. We have a lot to talk about this week. Yeah, it's. I think it's probably the biggest showdown that we've had because at least on the NA side of things. There's a lot of teams that are there because they shit the bed at spring groups, but also the added side of it being the first blast in NA in however long it was. What Miami last or I think it was Miami last. They did a yeah, Miami like, well did before a COVID. Stop. So. Yeah, um, yeah. So there's plenty of added pressure on the NA side of things. I think the EU side, it's more actually like a showdown. It's like one or two top teams. The rest you're kind of like ah, they're not going to make it anyways. But um, yeah, I'm kind of excited to see how it pans out because it's going to be a pretty good indicator of where teams are at coming into this or more as well. Because a lot of teams are going to want to make it into um, spring finals, but how much are they going to want to show before the or more? Are they going to go full out? It's it's really interesting how it's going to go. Now, I I completely agree with you there. I think there's a lot of questions that are obviously going to come up um, for these teams and, and their quality and stuff. I think what's hardest to say, if this is an indication of, you know, how good are they? Because it is a best of one scenario and it's a single, it's a single elimination of BO threes. However, um, it is going to be important because they're headed into the RMR where like you can't even afford to lose once you really can't like, that's it. Two losses and you're out. So one loss is going to be a death sentence. That first round that we're going to see, um, is going to be a death sentence. So I think that, you know, we're what we're seeing here for the showdown is a lot of really solid teams, and it's going to be all of their, like, real first test uh, before we head into this. The only team that, from here, that is not headed to the RMR um, is going to be uh, EG Black, um, because obviously EG Black couldn't play, but, uh, you know, they also... Uh, have decided to change out their team uh, from the main team for this, which they never announced. We just kind of reported it, and then this is how it is, and they've been registered. So, I, I, I do. I would have hoped that they would have officially announced it at any point, but it doesn't seem like they are. So, yeah, I mean, we're at that is. weird point now where Valens is like, "Oh, thanks for standing in for EG Black Hex," and it's like, uh, "Yeah, dude, I had yeah. no. I was like, what are we doing here? Like, what's going on? Like." <laughs> Do we think refresh is still happening? Everything that I've been told is that it's still happening. Um, so very curious to to see what's going on there. Like, I don't know. Plans change. Who knows? Maybe they found someone else. Maybe they things broke down. Maybe refresh saw all the comments. It was like, I don't know if I actually want to go to EG anymore. <laughs> it's also like the fact that we know what EG are like in terms of their press department. And until it's officially announced, I guess they kind of have to play around the topic and kind of say like oh well he's still technically here thanks for yeah. standing in on a technicality yeah so. i guess that's it might all just be kind of tongue-in-cheek who knows how they're going to be <laughs> handling it um so let's kind of go through these opening matches uh game by game we've got pain at mibr which uh we put out the preview today which i think is a pretty it, honestly i'm really I was the big push of this is over doing all the previews in post games. I know that some of you like writing it. I know some of you hate writing it. I actually enjoy a lot of these because as I look back and get to see things, I think they're a lot of fun to figure out like how, like what are the teams shaping up to be? How are they heading into this matchup? What should we expect? And really it's, it's a tale of two Brazilian teams that are kind of peaking at the right times. Pain has undergone this revolution in the last year or so, and now they seem to be one of the best teams um, in North America. But MIBR have just consistently achieved and achieved and achieved at the domestic level. So really, who it's hard to determine who's generally going to be the better team in this head-to-head -head matchup. I might honestly give it a little bit to MIBR just because I think that they've been so consistent and, and, and Sani has become such an integral part for them. But Payne obviously had that major showing at Pro League and and are they going to be able to carry that momentum heading into today? Yeah, I think Pain are also in a weird situation because a lot of the Brazilian teams outside of Furia have kind of struggled when they've gone over to Europe. And now yeah. Pain are the first ones to really break through. And like they made it to EPL playoffs. They had a really, really good showing there. 
I think that probably puts a lot more pressure, like the outside community that doesn't know Brazilian CS or doesn't know like American CS in general, are probably going to look and say like, oh, Pain did this on the international stage. They should be beating a team like MIBR who kind of sh- traditionally struggle there. But it yeah. still is a Brazilian matchup. Like both of these teams are very familiar with each other. They both know each other's styles. They both know how they like to play. Insani is obviously an X factor at the moment as well. In terms of being more well-rounded, I think I'd give the edge to Pain. But it's all how preparation went from Pro League to now. Yeah, I hope I really hope for Pain's sake they don't seem like the team to kind of like rest on their laurels or like get too egotistical off one result. <laughs> but I, I hope they do take it seriously and like they can. I I'd give them the advantage in that matchup. I'd say. I I think what's the the hard part here is that like. They're, they've recently switched IGLs. They've obviously had a, an interesting time there. It was Pro League just no one really knows what's going on there. Um, has, like, they made that change after Katowice. Yeah, are they still kind of like an unknown quantity? Is there just not enough demos to go off and, and understand what they can provide? And that's, that's a genuine question. At this point for MIBR, people know what they're like. People have seen Insani enough. They've been consistent enough to go ahead and go, okay, let's figure out what they need and and honestly we we graded all of the pro league as i i pulling up like literally all of the articles to try to just reference this but we graded their performance we graded mibr's performance and they didn't have necessarily the best one they i think we gave them what we gave them a c and it was literally just like they looked really good but they also faced tough teams like a 2-0 loss to g2 they got double digits i think in close like either both games or it was close i think I don't know. They're the number one team. If they got more than like six rounds in each one of them, I'll give it to them. Um, but those are those are obviously going to be tough ones. They also had to play Fnatic, which is a tough. So so that in that sense, I can be like, okay, maybe should we write off Pro League as much of like they just had really tough opponents. Um, whereas Payne kind of got gifted a little bit in their uh, in their roles. I mean, they had to. They almost beat Mouse. They got through because they basically were able to be Greyhound to qualify, which like that is hilarious that that's the team that you have to be to qualify to go through. Like it just uh, pieces seem to fall through. But then again, the biggest win for them was that that liquid game. Like that was insane. Like it was completely unexpected and they looked like a team that knew how to how to beat liquid. Yeah, like they also beat OG as well, which is as much as we oh, rag true. on OG for being this kind of inconsistent, we don't know what they're gonna sh- what OG is gonna show up. Um, it's still a legit European team. There's good talent on that team. Next is a good IGL. Um, on the pain IGL situation, I actually really like. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I really like the idea of Big Azera as the IGL because like he's a yeah. very good fragger. He seems like he has a really good mind for the game. And Brazilian IGLs have just been non-existent for so many years there's been such a vacuum in that situation no more than like with the north american scene there's been such a vacuum yeah we always look to the older players that are like nitro fallen like having big Zera, if he's able to step into that role the same way that taco kind of did with zero zero nation they got their initial bump up or whatever and they've they're another team that have been doing pretty well um yeah i, I really like the idea of big Zera, and I, I think i tweeted about it I'd, i wouldn't mind seeing him in a furia down the line if they oh, choose to go another direction yeah, and then uh, I, don't, I don't even know what to say about that. And then Art going ahead and trying to reinvent another entire team after he's been with Fury his in, his entire life. I don't know. It's interesting. I think, I think there's a lot we can tell you about what, what these two teams are. Um, but we don't have a ton of time to keep going in the grain or stuff for them. Uh, so the other big hitter, Liquid Nouns. Um, nouns are a weird team to me. They're 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 frustrating because I look at the players and I go, this team shouldn't be in the position or as good as they are, but they consistently beat expectations. Um, they have a good upset quality to them. I think Marky has become like he hasn't missed a beat. If anything, he's literally just become better somehow. Like I don't know how this kid just plays like wow for a year, comes back and is like, I'm literally the best player in North America. Like it's insane. The kid just just that's all he does is he he's he's just so good. And I feel like him and B Wills have really been pushing um this team to to a whole other level. I still have concerns over CJ. Um I don't necessarily know if Carson is also the player that's gonna help this team get to the next level. And and I don't know who are the appropriate replacements there. 
if they ever want to make a change. Now, listen, they could come into this matchup. They could beat Liquid, and then they could shut up me and probably everyone else that's, that's being a little critical. It, it's, 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 it's tough to see. Um, you know, I guess they, they seem too much of an unknown quantity, despite continuously, like, they qualifying for all these events. They even skipped. I was shocked that they skipped Melbourne. I thought they should have played Melbourne. I thought they could have done it, and then I thought that they could have easily gone to, to Melbourne for, for, for this all. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, well, I mean, what do you, what's your take on it? Is Liquid like just floundering at the right time that Nouns could potentially like get another surprise move here? Um, no, I don't think, like, they did flounder at EPL. We saw that comment come out of Yakin there saying we wasted our time preparing for this tournament. There's you been saw that comment come out. Yeah, because we wrote, we wrote it. That's what I'm saying. Like, the community in general, we saw. Yes. Yeah. Um, like he said that, and it really showed EPL there was not enough preparation or not enough right prep, like proper preparation. Yeah. Um, there's been enough time since they've been eliminated by pain that if Liquid Tone come out and absolutely bitch slap nouns, I'm I'd be very worried for them <laughs> because we can say all we want about nouns. Merky, obviously, as you said, has been doing a great job. I really like Tempest as a coach and what he does with that team because they've kind of suffered the same as ATK having a revolving door of players where you think, oh, this roster is going to be really good. Oh, wait, we just lost two players. We have to find yeah. replacements within the scene for it. But um, Liquid, historically, when they've come back to play these kind of more domestic uh, qualifiers, because in a sense it is a qualifier, when yeah. they do come back and play against North American teams like Nouns, uh, they normally dominate. So I, I'm expecting a Liquid domination because we know what those players are like in terms of their personalities they're not like in a bad way but like their egos they know how good they can be so they're going to want to send a message against this nouns team so okay okay well hopefully for liquid i mean they kind of did get on the right side of the bracket if there is any sort of right side of the bracket the winner of that will then play the winner of pain versus mibr which again liquid should win big big should on the win here. Uh, like they should have beaten Pain on land. Uh, Pain on line. I, don't know. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's again, it's difficult here. Um, so we'll see. And I think we were saying, I don't know if we were saying it before, but like these guys are going to want to get to, to DC. Like that's yeah. a big, it's a big motivation. Um, and, and it's really going to be important. Now when we look at the lower side of the bracket, complexity Imperial, just the fucking like that matchup, dude, that matchup sucks. I hate this matchup. It what? is anxiety inducing. Yeah, that's the it's the it's the it's the game of the showdown in the lower it bracket. Literally is. Not the it lower literally bracket, is like, and I first fucking round. hate it. Yeah. God. Because they played had... they played twice in the last like six months. It's gonna be over past the cider. The the times that they did, it was the last RMR where yeah. like complexity had five billion chances to close it out and lost and made me like lose my mind and then they pay in pro league where they got curve stopped 16-1 then proceeded to win ancient by the skin of their teeth and then somehow make it into overtime and win overtime like they should not have won that game and they did and it's and it's just like i i i hate this matchup it's gonna be another like grueling bo3 that i'm going to hate watching and i don't know i just there's nothing yeah. good that's going to come out of this game. I absolutely love this matchup. It's just for some reason, Imperials seem like complexity's kryptonite, if you can call it that. They're the team that you always see them being a banana skin for them because of those two matchups. I've been to the Major, I've been to Cologne, I've been to Katowice. The best matchup I've ever watched in person is this one at the Oromore. It's so exciting. It's so it's mental because they both play terrible. mental styles in terms of like retakes, pushes, yeah. everything. It's just, it's, I can't wait for Overpass to be the third map and for them to go to it. No, no. I just, I, I will lose my fucking mind. I will lose my fucking mind. I hate this so much. I do not need another, as Graham says in the chat, I do not need another JT 1v4. Like, it should not be a 1v4. That should not be a thing. We should not have that. It is, it is. But that, that's on, that's on Imperial Throwing. So, um, God, I think I you have to give, Complexity, the upper hand in the matchup. I, they, they won last time around. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I genuinely think that this is a 50-50 game. I might even give it to Imperial. Both yeah, had a terrible pro league. 
but I think the issues con- concerning um, complexity is that they have higher expectations on their on their heads, and I fear that that pressure might might be getting to them. Yeah, um, the veto for it seems pretty straightforward. It seems like Imperial always lean into Inferno against complexity, and in general, it's their favorite map to pick. Uh, they don't play Anubis. Uh, Imperial don't play Anubis. Complexity do play Anubis. So that seems like that's going to be out. Um, yeah, but like Anubis, they play it barely. Like they just lose all the goddamn time. Yeah, yeah. and they, that's they what I mean. did it. Imperial. I mean, they Permabana tried it like anyway, early so. on. They haven't played it in more than a month. They didn't. They didn't touch it at Pro League. Yeah, so Imper- I can see Imperial that just Perma not even. It, so, but now here's the thing: is like, do you even? But would they do it? They know how bad that, com- that complexity have been on Anubis. It's not a crazy thing to float it. Yeah, I got, maybe. I would I think like it, it honestly. I would like it more if teams floated these things, like Carrigan floating um, Vertigo and then getting knocked out of the major because of it. That was bad. That was so bad. Um, but yeah, I think it would be silly from Complexity not to have seriously prepared for Inferno in this situation because they don't have a bad Inferno. It's just Imperial have the upper hand whenever they do play them. Yeah. And I think so I, overpass. I mean, overpass should come through, and we'll probably see ancient or vertigo. Yeah, we'll see ancient or vertigo. Looks like ancient. Yeah, could be a nuke. Well, I mean, there's lots of maps that they all really play. I would say that, like, if if anything's going to go more towards complexity's favor, it's seeing if they can somehow have a nuke overpass ancient. If they can get two yeah. of those three maps, I think that they can be comfortable. But we'll see. Um, mid the last matchup. Uh... Furia versus EG Black. EG Black standing in for their main team, which is kind of sparked the question: How the hell can this happen? Just sort of team gets dragged so, out for another roster. So I read. So I read this. Okay. So I read up on the rules. There is no EG Black in definition. Like, there's no team organization <clears throat> called EG Black. EG Black do not play in Blast qualifiers. They do not do any of that stuff. They are allowed to be registered because they are signed to Evil Geniuses. They have a contract with Evil Geniuses, the organization. Evil Geniuses can do whatever the fuck they want because they own the slot. They own a franchise slot. And this is, and now people are finally understanding why franchise things are really bad is because of the wonky shit that's going to happen because of it. Now, do I agree with this decision? No. Do I think that putting forward a, what is pretty much a dead roster in that EG main team into showdown does any good no if anything i think putting eg black is better because i think you're adding a team that has now just qualified for melbourne he's riding really really high and they're probably going to give a good fucking shake to furia i don't expect them to beat furia i would say i would give them a 50 50 shot at winning a single map but like i think it's like pretty good yeah um i'm still not sold on eg black like i think they're doing pretty well in terms of, like their build-up play and stuff they did well against in the melbourne qualifier that we're probably going to get on to later um i'm i just think furia it's just an insane level of competition we've seen different players on this lineup like junior uh, hex is playing with eg black yeah hex is still playing with eg black he's still and, playing and, as this and... as the stand as the stand and that's what I, <laughs> that's what i mean by like when i say like dead roster i'm just like there are rumors of refresh coming in. Hex is playing with DG yeah. Black. Like there, there's are clearly changes that are happening to the main team. The main team, I do not believe, is in a position right now with with everything to be playing at the top level for this. It seems like the better move to put EG Black forward. That's what I mean. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it'll be I'm good getting yelled at. It'll be chat. good experience for them. There's no yeah, way that they win it. Oh, it, it it'll be great experience for them because again, this was I think. But one of the biggest problems with the the blueprint thing was not give not having enough tier one opportunities for academy teams, and putting EG Black out here is this is what you'd want. You're going to get to play Fury in a competitive environment. It's very important, and I think that like th- that is what you need to do. You need to give these guys opportunities. They give them the, they're giving them the the Melbourne opportunity, which thank God they finally beat ATK on the third best of three that they had to play in like two days. Like shout out to that. But like, you know what I mean? Like it's, it, this is, this is what they should be doing, especially when the main team is not in the position to play to having the Academy team taking these opportunities. Now, if 
I was not an NA fan. And if I'm someone on Ents who's looking at the situation like Snappy did and was like, why can't we play? Listen, I get it. And it really, really sucks. And I still, again, disagree with the concept of these franchise leagues. I think that the spirit of I, the spirit of Counter Strike is that we need to have an open ecosystem. I think financially, the franchise leagues make sense. The spirit of it, it's like a, just constantly two forces. Um, but yeah, that's the just the nature of the leagues. And and I there's there were the open qualifiers for those systems, but it's it's just overall it's tough. Overall, it's tough. Yeah. That's what I'm. It, I think it, I'm trying to say. So with Evil Geniuses, we know it's like the blueprint. They had all these different teams, and it was. Yeah. It was sold as they can change between, they can swap, whatever. Um, is that the same with other teams? So, say hypothetically, like Liquid had an academy team, but it's called Liquid Academy. Can they, they can just totally do it? They can send that. They can just do whatever. They can totally do it. Yeah, that's the whole. That's the that was the point of these was that they're not signed to Evil Geniuses Black. Yeah, they're signed to Evil Geniuses because it makes it easier order, yeah. when you need to register players for certain things because you're allowed to register whatever substitute. They give the spot what 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 has kind of I guess been the difference for for these more of the franchised events is that like when you have the the things here it's the organization owns the spot not the core players the organization and that's where they're asking okay as the organization what players are you registering well, we're gonna register these players they're different from the other players but we have them and we want to use them that's that before it used to be you have to have the majority core slot and I think that's just what's changed with these franchise leagues. And now evil geniuses are smart enough to realize that they can take advantage of it and use it to their advantage. Yeah. Okay. It's in the rules. I might not like the rule, but it's in the rule. And they're following the rules. They're not bad just for following the rules. Yeah. Give us give us EG Gold at the next qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> EG Gold, which impact update, EG Gold are our second behind detonate. Uh, in their group, and they are, yeah. What you didn't shaking your head? No, yes, I know this. Yeah, no, I, no, I, I didn't. Know I was that. editing the ESL Impact article for for Dust Two yesterday. Um, yeah, they're second in the group behind Detonate, and they, I think, they need to win the next game to absolutely guarantee that they get into playoffs to then try to see if they can get to Dallas. So it's 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 not like they're not like so out of it, but they are they are getting it, which is good. Yeah, no, I was only shaking my head because impact from like impact seasons for me are kind of like ECL seasons. It's kind of hard to keep up with everything. But whenever I do get to see any of it, it seemed like EG Gold were a side that were struggling. It was always CLG or I think they did start slow. It, so. Yeah, so that that's why I was surprised when you said that they were right. one behind Detonate. I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> no, no, no. I think they, I think they, they're two and one. Um, unclear. Okay. So, um, okay, moving on into our pro league recap, where we can talk about all of the teams. That were there. Um, I think the biggest thing that we just need to talk about is liquid. Like we gave them, what did we give them in our grading? We gave we gave them like a C minus, and that might genuinely have been too generous. Like, yeah. We gave complexity a C minus, and we gave evil geniuses an F, and we gave liquid a C minus. I think I debated about this when 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 we were doing it. I think that might have genuinely been too generous because that team. Like, you cannot lose to Rare Adam. Like, I understand that they had a 29-hour travel day. They, like, had multiple connections. They were not being rebooked. Every day of the week, you should beat Rare Adam. Now, to Rare Adam's credit, they went ahead and surprised a lot of people. They did show up pretty well. They got a game off of Navi. They actually proved to be a, a solid team. But then losing to Pain. Like, you, you guys, like, if you're going to be a top-five team in the world... It, like I'll give you one or two of these slip ups, but like to have two big upsets in the same event just like that really, really hits the confidence hard as to what this team can do. And the expectations are they should be in the final. They were in the final last time. They should. They had a very, very winnable route to the final. And and I'm just I'm shocked that it didn't go through. Yeah, I'm really worried for this Liquid team at the moment because it seems like they're slumping at the wrong time because we saw last week CS2 is coming out. We saw Blast is going to be the last major for CSGO and I think it was HLTV that put it up. Who's the best player to never win a major? Elysia and Nico were the two big ones that everyone was discussing. Yeah. Elysia's been to so many majors. He's had such a high level. This is your last chance to get 
the major and it's creeping up fast. So if you're starting to fall off, like the results aren't coming at pro league, if you can't beat a team like, if you're getting too old by a team like Payne, and Payne yeah. did kind of peak at the right time, like they nearly beat Maus, but they didn't. If they beat Maus 2 0, which I thought they were going to do, then fair enough, just Cinderella run, you can kind of ride out from Liquid, but Maus were able to come back and close it out. So um, I'm, re- I'm really worried for this Liquid team, and I hope they're starting to knuckle down and take it more seriously based off Yakinder's comment of, I don't, we I don't didn't even think it's enough. like. I don't even think it's not needed to take it seriously enough. I think it's like it was a combination of a lot of factors, but I just worry if they're just if they just got tired and if they're just like this is a slog. We just had all this shit, and then and then did they were they in the last group? Yeah, they were in the last group, so they just had to keep going straight through. So they didn't get any boot camp boot camp time. Other teams were able to get time to rest, either go home, relax, practice in between, get a European stuff. I think genuinely. That if Liquid, say the same group structure and formation, say they were in the same placements no matter what, but they were in a group that was one week earlier or whatever, their travel schedule was different. I think that they would have had that week-long boot camp. And I think they would have come into playoffs and they actually would have been able to give a deep playoff run. The problem is, you're given the hands that you're dealt and you have to succeed at the hands that you're dealt. And they did not succeed at that, which is very tough as, as North American fans as hyperbolic North American fans, which I am and you are becoming. Um, <laughs> and, and it's and it's it's just, I don't know. I look at this and I'm, I'm like, when the expect, when the minimums are so high and you don't even get close to it, it hurts, it stinks. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't really have too much else to say on Liquid. I think it's just a massive underperformance and I'm just hoping that they can bounce back because the comment from your kinder... Re- and he's never one to pull his punches with his comments and interviews and stuff. No, uh, the no. first I think it was the first time uh, Cologne, he said something ridiculous like, "Oh, we're just we're doing shit, we're shit," or something like that. Yeah, he did. He was like, "We oh, was it? Yeah, it was his first event where he came in. It was like, yeah. yeah, we suck. Like, we don't have any fucking practice. Like, I just joined the team a week ago. Like, what 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 do you think's happening?" <laughs> well, the way the way he worded it, that uh, how did he word it exactly? He said like, "We're not we." We wasted our time practicing for this event, so it seemed like whatever they were putting, trying to implement yeah. was a big write-off that it, they did just waste their time. So that's what I'm hoping when I say that they're taking it seriously is that they go back to the drawing board and do things right. So Yeah, we'll, we'll see, obviously, and we'll go through what they're able to, to do. And I think it's going to be tough because they're back in NA now. They have to uh, do that practice, and then immediately after this, they're getting on the plane, they're heading down to Mexico. Where I'll go see them and I can go grill them about why did they blow it at Pro League? No. Um, we did give a lot of credit to ATK. We were very nice to ATK, giving them a B minus, literally despite going out last. I think I, I don't think there's any other team I could give a B minus to for losing every single game. And in that. Um, highlights from this: uh, they they gave it to Ents. They really did give it to Ents. Uh, so that was that was pretty cool to see. Like they could have actually surprisingly won that. Uh, the liquid game, obviously tough. Like, come on, you have to play a top five team in the world. That's hard. And by the way, had a crazy amount of people being like, "What do you mean, ATK now have the hardest route?" They they had to play Ents, and then they had to play Liquid, and then they had to play Astralis. And people on Twitter are like, "Well, that's not that hard." Like, I don't know sometimes if people are just like trolling me or like that stupid. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I, I genuinely am getting to the point where maybe I'm the idiot and everyone's just playing a joke or everyone's just so moronic that they have these takes of, like, Liquid aren't that good of a team. Yes, Liquid are that good of a team. I, and, and Astralis are, too. Astralis genuinely are a top 15 team. They're very low in that top 15, but they are a top 15 team. They're a tier 2 team. You know what? I'm not I, I've, been, I've been making this case. We, we, we did a whole thing. You're I'm Astralis not going to get into hater. it. We, we, they were... S- if they were that close to losing to ATK, ATK should have won that game. If you oh, watch the the ten two, I I remember it. Not, and not I, even I the ten two. When they were on match point, they had a five v three, and just everyone starts swinging out, dying so one by one. It's B side Inferno. You shouldn't be fucking retaking that three v five. It was ridiculous, and I will never forgive them for keeping a shot in the arms. Oh, no, it, it really that one. That one I think hurt more than anything because I was like. I was visiting friends and I was off that weekend. And I remember like just turning it on and watching it the whole morning. And like, we're all getting ready to go out to like brunch. We're just hungover. And I just being like, oh my God, 
this, these guys are about to do it. And they're like, oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah, we love that. And then like they slowly start losing. And I was like, I just didn't, I just, I just stopped talking. Stop talking yeah. And then like an hour later, they're just like, hey, Ryan, you were really excited about that game. What happened? I'm like, they lost. And they're like, what? It was like, they, they lost. And they had to have the question of like, well, you were so excited. You said that they were like destroying them. I'm like, they were. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I well, hope that's, keep, that's how I, uh, it's, it's, oh. it's, it was tough, but they showed out well. Um, unfortunately though, we do have the news that Kakanito and ATK are not able to come to an agreement. So it looks like they're going to have to continue without him. So, I mean, I don't know. Rec, Rec has seemed pretty good in his place. Uh, a final in uh, Pro League and a final at Melbourne closed. Not anything to really shake your head at, especially for coming in so late. I don't know. Yeah. It's it's a, he's an option, and and uh, maybe he finishes out. Maybe he moves forward. Who knows? I don't know. I think Kakanito, just from his performance at Pro League, really showed how much he could elevate ATK because ATK yeah. are still a team that are struggling to find their identity after losing Fady after going through Momo very quickly. Was it Momo? Or yeah, or? Pluto. Yeah, Pluto. Momo's on EG. Um. Yeah, they're a team that are still trying to find their identity. It looked like if they could get Kakanito, they could get a consistent five. They could rebuild on it. I, I don't know much about Rec. It just seems at the moment there's no real NA talent that can kind of come into a team like ATK and just take them to the next level internationally. Like sure, he's doing great at ECL, but we've seen plenty of players do great at ECL and then go into international competition and struggle. Kakanito looked like he could hold up against those top teams, like a Charlotte's like Liquid. And, and if he's sort of, holding up against those top teams, he's coming back to NA and fucking wrecking everyone. Smurfing, like you just, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it's all over, dude. It's just not happening. Um, okay, other teams that we should talk about: uh, Complexity. Um, again, probably a more favorable C minus rating to them. Dog awful. Just you can't be losing to writers. Big, I might give that to maybe, but like the Imperial game. They should have lost. And if they lost to Imperial, they finished last. Like, they need to do better. They have to do better. You know, and, it's bad and, when the general manager's in chat saying that they should have gotten a worse rating. <laughs> yeah, he's right. We were too nice to complexity. We, I remember we were doing it. And Jeff, Jeff was like talking to me about any of this article. He's like, you know, Ryan, we're giving them like D's and stuff. And that's like really, really bad. I'm like, yeah, they were really bad. Maybe we need to change this. But like, I don't know. They were pretty bad. Yeah, I'm, it's just so frustrating with complexity. You really thought last season of EPL that they were going to come up. They had a great result there. They made playoffs. They took phase to the limit. Then go out of the Oromore. They do great at Katowice, and then they just bomb out of Pro League. It's, it's just so incredibly inconsistent, which makes it even more frustrating. Cause well, it, actually, whatever. actually, this is good for them. Because good at Katowice, bomb out of Pro League. Swing back up, good at the Oromor. Bomb out, out of the whatever major. else. Like, don't care after that. Bomb out of the major. Don't care. Just let's get there. <laughs> Come on, give me some stickers. Um, no, I think it's really frustrating because whatever you say about a team like Complexity, <clears throat> if you look at, say, EG, for example, they never get those results internationally. So you just know that consistently you're going to get disappointed by EG. It doesn't look like they're actually building something at the moment. Hence why it looks like they're going into a rebuild. With complexity, they've had this roster for a good amount of time. It was after Cologne, so we're, ne we're nearly pushing on a year with Holzerk, I'd say. Was it July? So it's, uh, it's like nine months. God, is it really? It's eight or nine months with Holzerk. It's, it's been a good period. It was the summer break, I think. When, yeah, when it was after, right after Cologne. He joined, yes, July 28th, he joined. Oh, um, yeah. Big day, big time. Yeah, we're getting up towards a year. But I think he's really he's really hit his stride, um, and I think this team has really done it. And who else who has who else has really come alive is Grim as well. We're starting to see Fang more, and Floppy is is the problem with Floppy is his positions. He's just he's like stuck B ramp, like with an AUG, and they're like, see see what happens. Maybe you live, maybe you die. We don't know. Get some info. And like, that's kind of how he's been pushed into those. And it, and it works for complexity. It works. We know that he can excel, but it, he's kind of just pushed into these roles. The question is, if you do move anyone else into what his current roles are, does the team struggle? Do they go worse? Um, and I think right now, I'm of the opinion, don't rock the boat too much. 
And if everything seems to be kind of going okay, if Katowice, which like they succeeded in, maybe Pro League's the one off. If the RMR, they go through 3 0. Hallelujah, baby. Like, let's rock. Let's ride. Like, we are fucking spectacular. Don't do anything. Just keep the same thing going. Um, and and yeah, so that's how I see it. I'm I'm hoping that this is just a one off and that this sucks, but we'll see. Yeah, that's a the point that I was making with them being together eight or nine months now is you're pushing on that year mark. You need to have more consistency because when they put their roster together initially, which is well over a year now, they're junior, and we said, all right, give this roster a year, and they need to be performing at a high level on a consistent basis. And we're just not seeing that. And like you said, I'm floppy in terms of the positions. That's another major issue that I've kind of seen with the North American scene is like there's no players that kind of thrive in these anchor roles like you have shush in denmark you have perfecto in the yeah. cis region we have a lot of great like mid players kind of like taking the fights aim stars but how many players have you seen be really cerebral in the same way as like a zipniks uh, or a shush for that matter which is where you kind of struggle where if you did want to replace floppy where do you go in the na scene yeah, I don't think you go anywhere in the NA scene if you want to replace Floppy. That's that's the biggest problem. You, yeah. you don't. Like maybe someone from EG Blue, maybe? Like I don't but I don't even think so. Like yeah. I don't think that there is another person right now that can go to the same level that we would ask um of anyone in this team from our region. And and that's the that's the toughest part. Like the the thing that always I'm I'm am, I do get curious about is like what happens at the end of the day? if twist has to come back to North America, like what happens then? And when that happens, what team does he go for? EG like, black. I don't think he's going for, <laughs> but you know, you have to think like, does liquid look at him and go, all right, guys, who out of this team is, is getting cut for twist. Like that's the only, right. That would be the only like biggest one I could see happening. And I don't think it's NAF and I don't think it's your kinder. So you can pick who you think is happening after that. Um, and then we look at EG. They would do anything for Twist. They would probably sell an arm and a leg. And then even Complexity. like the, the, For Complexity to Twist to come in would be the most insane thing ever. I'm just throwing out random shit here because I think it's fun to throw a random shit. I have no, there's no point of this tangent. I just, I just decided to have fun with it. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, now that you mentioned those names from Liquid, Naf is probably the most cerebral player since he's been pushed yeah. into those roles. So yeah. if we can see Floppy become like a NAF, there we go. Yeah. He just needs a bit of time in those roles. But like you mentioned twists, that's probably a good segue into the, uh, the EPL re- recap. He did it. He won the Grand Slam. Yeah, I know. Congrats where, to him. Very, where'd very you put big. Him, where do you put him now? Historically, I, NACS he, go. He is the most decorated North American pro. He is probably one of the best to have played the game. He is not the best. I think so. I don't think achievements, just because he has the most achievements, does not mean that he is statistically the best player. He's not, the, he, he, I think overall is like a Hall of Famer, like first ballot, like would fit in anything else. I think he's top three. I don't know who necessarily, like he doesn't, there's not a single player to me right now that I can absurdly say is 100% the, the greatest player from North America to play. Like I think of Elige and I think of Twist and I think there's a very good battle between them of saying these are the two players that have consistently been some of the best in North America. I think what and what honestly hurts is that when I look at other players, I look at people like Skadoodle, I would look at people like Tarek, and I would look at them and I'd go, if you guys stuck in Counter-Strike, you guys would have been some of the best North American players ever. And and I look at now the, the crop that we have, and I say the people that are still in it, like I don't I don't know, I really don't know. It's it's I think it's hard, and I don't think that him winning the Grand Slam is enough vindication of becoming the best player. I think he's it means that he is working exceptionally well on these teams. I think he is the greatest player from North America to ever go abroad. Absolutely. And I think that he has a lot of great things there. I just don't know. And it's because I probably haven't looked into it enough, but I can't, I don't think I can confidently say one way or the other, if he's the greatest North American player. I completely disagree. I think so for me, 
to have secured himself. I think it was a conversation between him and Liege. If you go way back, you throw Hiko into the situation that people have a lot of people have forgotten. He was the best player for yeah. a good good period of time. Okay. But right now, it was Elige and Twist. For me, at least, I really like Elige as a player. I think his eye test is fantastic. He is amazing. He's Mr. Liquid. If you put Elige into phase, that phase team isn't anywhere near as good as Twist's phase. I think because Twist... Different, but I think because they're different players. Oh, yeah, they're different players for sure, but I think... Right, and I, but I think it's hard to then go ahead and, and, and say that, therefore, they're, like... Like, where would you put Naf? Um, third? I think the problem... Like, so, if, if Naf went to Europe, he probably would be higher in my estimations. I think he hasn't had that opportunity. Like, Twist did. He took, he took a risk going to Europe, because we've seen Carrigan teams do well, and then... Yes. They've but I don't think it off. was that much of a risk joining FaZe. I just he, don't think it was joined, that much of a risk. When he joined FaZe, they didn't have ROPS at the time. Uh, it was a FaZe team that had just it was a FaZe uh, team that had just lost Nico. Um, they were really struggling at the time. And even for the first few months under Carrigan, it didn't look great because they were waiting on ROPS to come out because they still had Olaf at the time. For me, Twist going over and doing what he did, he's oh He's not now, the main component of now, phase. The team, by the way, didn't have Kerrigan. Yeah, Kerrigan. Well, Kerrigan signed within like a couple of weeks. Yeah, but it was it was Rain, Cold Zero, Brokey, and Olaf is is how Good he show. joined that team. Yeah, it was God. to replace Nico, right? I can't remember. I think it was to replace Nico because that was their big star signing. For me, at oh least... no, no, no! It was Kirby. They benched Kirby. Fair. Um. Yeah, so for me with twists, I think him going over, doing everything he did, like looking back at CSGO, for me at least, and this is my personal opinion, I'd put this phase team as the second best team ever in CSGO on like the five man basis. It's, Astral it's peak Astralis far and away, but then I'd put second phase. Maybe there's a bit of recency bias in there, but when you look at the achievements that they had, Kerrigan got his major with this team. He got the Grand Slam. They won Cologne. They won EPL twice. They won Katowice. They won everything there is to win, pretty much. And now they're peaking again, and it looks like they could win the last CSGO Major. If they do that, then they go even higher. Like They don't hit peak Astralis. But Twist is a massive component in that. And I think you can say whatever you want about um, like team achievements not really contributing to it enough. It's kind of like with Messi. Like Even if Messi... Like Messi won a lot with Barcelona, and he has all these individual ones as well. I, I I wouldn't take it away from someone else if they had less team achievements. But or you if they give it to them more because they have team achievements. Yeah, like I think it's difficult to put into words, but um, well, try. Ooh. We're we're writers. This is what our yeah. Job is. <laughs> I mean, off the top of my head as well. Uh, Twist did on two different teams as well. He did. The Grand Slam twice, which is an incredibly hard feat. He did it in record yes. time, and he, but he's been a key component in both of these teams. It's not like he's just like a role player. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I'm not arguing that with you. I'm not arguing that he's not a consistent player, that he's not a very key component. I'm arguing that I do not believe the achievements are inherently making him a better skilled player, a player that has a longer longevity. Like I think a Liege has a greater longevity than Twist has. He's had he he has. I think it's only by a few years, but I don't think I, I don't think it just immediately qualifies them as, as 100 percent best. I, I literally have the two of them very close together. Like I I just I don't know the answer, and I don't I don't think there's a way that we can definitively say it just yet whether one player is better. Now, now, if Twist goes ahead and they do win the major, done. I'm done. Twist is the best player. I would 100 percent be done. Because at that point, it's not just about, oh, the team achievements are, are, are better and doing it. It's they're consistently doing it. They're consistently better on this team. And he has to put up a good performance. But they've, cons they've consistently done So you're saying that team I'm saying, I'm don't saying the matter difference. that much. I'm saying the difference. I'm saying there's just, it needs to be that little bit more. But you're Ronaldo, saying with, Ronaldo or Messi with like all the Champions League wins, right? If... Those two, who can never really say who's the better? And I would never look at them and I would never go Messi. like, oh, they're better because... <laughs> I'm a United fan and a Ronaldo fan. 
uh, I think it's it, it kind of you know off my point. We got to move on. No, I, I, I want to quickly finish this. Fine. Um, it throws off your argument when you say that team achievements don't matter as much, but Twist is the best if he wins this team achievement next month because, or whatever. The, because I, for me, I'm kind of the same, but for me, the Intel Grand Slam was that moment where I said, okay, Twist is the best player of all time. He went and won two Grand Slams, a major. It's more than anyone else in NACS, and he was a massive part of all those teams, and he was I'd say he was the second best player on the team. I know he hasn't Martin, won it. A... Martin, can we talk about the America's RMR? I don't want to yeah, talk about this go. anymore. I don't, don't want to do this anymore. Uh, that's I'm over it. Defeat. We'll, we'll, do a, we'll, do a, we'll do a whole thing we'll after do it the off. major. <laughs> we'll do a whole thing after the major. We'll just make, we'll just make a podcast titled Twist or Leash. That's it. Um, okay. RMR. Wow. Boy, do we have a lot uh, for this one. We've talked about it in our like way too early previews. And, and now it's here. Uh, and I'm going with Daniel. It's going to be so exciting. I'm very excited. You, unfortunately, were supposed to go uh, because I thought this was going to be in Europe. Uh, so I, I am sorry. It wasn't going to be. Well, I told you. I didn't think it was going to be. They had so many issues. Like, uh, anyways. Moving on um, swiftly. Happens. So, as everyone knows, the RMR is significantly more different than previous RMRs. It is a two loss and you're out scenario. So you can only lose twice, which means that teams that are 3-0 and teams that are 3-1 will go through. If you lose twice, you are out. There is no seeding match. There are only five spots available because we sucked so badly at the last major, we lost a spot, which means all the teams that qualify now have to do better so that they can earn more spots. So we have to do that. Damn it. Um, I think... I, I think that there is a very clear difference in terms of quality and who should go through. I think that you have Furia, Liquid, Pain, Complexity, and MIBR should be the teams that go through. I do not think Zero Zero Nation has the quality. I think that they have been shaky. I do not think that Imperial has the quality, even though they always seem to turn up when they, when they can't. Uh, team one are plucky underdogs that can cause a upset in the best, in the best of ones. And I think that uh, nouns have, can make a decent account of themselves. Now, the opening matches are going to be really, really interesting because it is Furia versus Team 1. It is Liquid versus Zero Zero Nation. It is Bestia versus Nouns. Complexity versus Fuchsia 1500. Imperial versus Detonate. Pain versus Paqueta. Fluxo versus Yur. And MIBR versus Flamengo. Then... They all are going to do the second round of, uh, they're doing the Swiss round number two. So they're only doing, so this is how interesting this is, is they have to do the like eight best of ones to, to start this off. Uh, and then uh, we're going to do the, and then they do four other BO ones. Those are the, the one Oh matches. So basically by day two is when everyone should be playing those, those three. So, the guy that has always done the uh, calculator has brought it back once again for everyone here. And now this guy's a I fucking think hero. He is a fucking hero here. He is a very big hero for this. I think let's let's try and do this together. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's I think Furia Liquid. I think Nouns beat Bestia. Complexity win. Imperial win. Pain win. Fluxo win. MIBR win. Am I totally off on this one? I think the liquid one's a scary one, considering it's best of one. It, zero, 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 it one is. Cold Zero is back. <laughs> like He's, it's not. It is a weird. It is. I will give you that. It has been a little weird. Zero Zero Nation didn't have the worst. Didn't have the worst one, but I think Liquid are going to have enough time consistently that they're in NA. That I think that they're going to be able to really do a good boot camp, and I think they're going to be practicing a lot on themselves and a lot on these teams and going out expecting it. I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to be okay. What what kind of fucking crack were they smoking giving Bestia the third seed? Or like, how um, I think it was based off of finishing, of, of where they finished in certain... Um, of, of where they finished in the qualifiers because they got in the close, they got the first slot. They were first. So they got, they got the number one. That's, that's how I think that they did the seeding. That's stupid. Nouns is the low seed. <clears throat> so Bestia with the number one seed out of that, they got it. And then Complexity finished first, so they got the first NA seed. And then Imperial finished second in South America, so they got the second South American seed. So that's, that's how they're doing this. 
for the love of God, let nouns be bestia so we don't give everyone a heart attack having Imperial versus Complexity in the second. Please, God! So, give it to me as an elimination game. <laughs> so let's, yeah, so let's see that nouns. Okay, so nouns win, and I think, <clears throat> are, are we all set on those 1-0s? Um, yeah, I don't think there's much else to say. Okay. Maybe maybe Yur versus Fluxo could be an interesting one because I don't rate Fluxo that much, and Yur seem to be kind of like this banana skin team for a lot of teams. Well, what, what do you, what do you think? Gonna have, what's going to be very interesting is that Yur will be playing with Rec, who has been playing on ATK. So everyone's kind of been a little bit disjumbled for for this upcoming RMR, which leads me to believe that it's gonna not really go Yur's way. I think that this is a Fluxo win. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's that's my angle there. Um, all right. So then we have Furia, and these are again in the one O's. They are best of ones, not BO threes. So in a best of one, Furia nouns. I think I think we can say that's Furia. Furia does now. Have one, so. Liquid MIBR. This is again. That's a tough one. It just screams insanity dropping 28 it kills. It screams insanity dropping like 50, dude. It's so bad. It's like a double overtime. I hate it so much. I, I I'd fucking st- hate it, dude. So I'd still give it to Liquid. Give it to Liquid. That's what Logic says. In and terms then, of preparation, that's why I'm giving it to Liquid. Yeah. And then we're going to see uh, complexity over Fluxo. I think, I think we can, again... Close game, though. Close game. He's close game. And then I will say that Pain beat Imperial. Same. Yeah. Okay. Now, out of this, Bestia beat Los plus one. Zero Zero Nation beat Flamengo. I'd probably give it to Los plus one. I just... Ooh, I, okay. Okay, go I, for it. I, I rate Los plus one pretty highly. Like, I like Maluk. I like what he does. I like how he prepares. Is it last time? I just don't know much about These Bestia. The O1s are BO3s. Oh, ones are BO3. Yeah. So this is okay. So you think it'll be a three? Okay. Okay. So it's like best year's results haven't been insane. And at the previous RMORs, they don't really like cause that much upset. So they're not like a 9Z who I'm surprised not to see here. Um who yeah, always do well when they, yeah, yeah, when they when they go to the RMORs, you always know that 9Z. What was Best Year called before? It was it's Myers' um, team. They were another name. Yeah, I forget what it's Isris, yeah. Like, but something Isris, I don't rate that highly. All right, I mean, fine. You want to do a best? Okay, then I was going to also say zero zero nation. They go through. Yeah. I think this is... I, I'm going to go crazy here. I think this has your and this has all over it. Now, I, I think, I given, given the current rosters, I think that that happens. Yeah, like it's... I don't I, think it's I don't think it's the craziest thing in the world. It's definitely there are definitely upsets. But I don't know. I think it can this, happen. This okay. RMR just seems really not as exciting as the previous RMRs like Antwerp and Rio. No, it's, because they have weird teams. There's no evil genius, yeah. there's no nine Z. Like it kind of hurts me a little bit. In like um, the nicest way, it's kind of like a bunch of no namers in like the lower side. It section. is. <laughs> it is it feels like a lot of no namers. Um so we'll have to see. Okay. Uh all right, let's scroll down here a little bit. We have, yeah, detonate. We think detonate over Paquette that. Just for the fact that we know more about them. We know more about. So we don't. We, oh, they're playing the, with me? There is, no, they're not yet. They're finding out tomorrow. So okay. there are some, there are some passport issues that are seemingly happening over there on the detonate team. Uh, so unclear who exactly it is going to be. The coach might have to step in. But. I think I let's assume the current rosters. Let's, let's assume, assume yeah. nothing. Yeah. All right. So now, now what comes is ooh, with the detonate. Oh no, this sucks. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I've seen we this. tried it to we tried to avoid it. It comes. I've, see, I've seen this movie before. <laughs> what happens if Paquetta wins? What happens if Paquetta wins? Okay, 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 okay. Okay, we're doing with detonate winning. Let's just do it with detonate winning. Kill me. Um, L- Liquid complexity at two zero. I've seen this movie before. <laughs> <laughs> Liquid complexity at two zero, and then complexity so, has to play imperial for qualification. Complete. No way. <laughs> yeah. No. Bad. Oh, I love it. I think. Okay. So. So imperial beat year. Flexo beat detonate. I would say zero zero might beat nouns. 
I think that's what happens here. That's actually pretty shocking that it changes nothing. Regardless, I mean, it changes the well. Actually, it changes the seating. Or is there no? There should be a. There should be Wait. a. Be a, no. There is going to be a, a three zero seating match. There is, that isn't is, going to be. The one one is best three, so it's all the way through best threes, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is just so weird as a concept. One one games being best. Three. I know, but it's elimination matches, so it has to happen. Um. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. Not really much that you change in terms of form and stuff. I guess zero zero nation over nouns. Um, MIBR over last was one. I I don't know. I think, in all honesty, I think that this is how this ends, at least for the round four and the round five. Like, I just round see this happening four. in terms of current quality. Complexity over Imperial. Three maps over past finish. It's, it's kind of crazy, but, like, I think that these are the teams, and, and I kind of want to stamp it right now, and I'm excited that when, when this happens on Sunday, we can just click it and, like, boom, there we go. And I think I think Liquid beat Furia in a BO3 to 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 get the first place decider. I think yeah. here's here's the other thing. I think that in the best interest of everyone, Furia needs to go to the legend stage because I think that Liquid need to they need to get their reps in. They they struggle early on, so they'll struggle early in challengers against weaker teams, and then they can succeed. And that's how that's how I think it'd be best if that happens. Yeah, like just looking at the five teams qualifying, it's not as if there's a massive debate over who else goes through. I mean, Whereas I think maybe Imperial, maybe Zero Zero Nation, but I Imperial think Imperial don't this have plot armor fair. this time around, though. Yeah, there is no plot. Yeah, no one gives a shit that. It, I mean, well, actually, no. The plot armor now is that you have um, Imperial going through because it's Fallen's last major and it's Fallen's year of retirement. And Fallen, Fallen goes to the major. He 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 gets eliminated, and he announces his retirement at Paris. That's the plot armor. Announce it at IEM Rio that you're not qualifying to. So <laughs> just just go to it. just go oh to it anyways. Go up on stage. Dude. But that was it's... the whole point of the last dance: is that we're qualifying for the Rio major, and now they're still fucking here. Now he's talking about joining an NA team next year. Just... Grow up. Anyways, um. <laughs> all right so those are the teams that's how i think it's gonna go uh phenomenal perfect all right um we need now we're getting up on our hour um so we're gonna wrap some stuff up here let's go talk about uh counter-strike yes, 2 so no more second counter-strike major um how do we feel pissed obviously i know, I know. You, um, you didn't get your chance to go to singapore very sad yeah. rumor um, anyways the rumor. Um, hey i wanted to go to singapore i thought that was gonna be really fun I was gonna you know, like take off time and go travel around. It's just annoying that now that we know it wasn't like we knew very far ahead of time, so a lot of people would have been like, "Ah, oh, I'll just skip Paris. I'll go to the next major. Or I'll do whatever." And now they just spring it on you, saying, "Oh, surprise!" Yeah. That one, that one, I think is it hurts because teams and organizations are planning out like for that kind of stuff. Um, I think I said it in a tweet where I was like. For sticker money for some of these organizations staying alive like it's very important that they do that they, they can see this source of income they account for it they play sat they pay salaries with it players can account for it especially if they're on unsigned teams like if like looking for example like nouns if nouns and those players are able to get it it's incredible for them um or players on bad news eagles right they've made the major several times they've they continuously make it to, to these things them getting the sticker money allows them to remain independent and allows them to continue to do those those that that great operation that they have. Um, without this second major, it, now it's kind of a little bit more lean. It's like you know you're gonna have to budget a little bit heavier. Um, yeah. And I don't know how that necessarily is is good for a scene. What also concerns me is that the major seems to be so soon in Denmark in Copenhagen, which like cool place. I'm actually very excited. I think that it's gonna be a good one run. I'm shocked that PGL are doing it over like Blast at copenhagen seems wrong but like you know what screw it great um but it, it's like why can we not make sure that um like what's the schedule like it's gonna be in march and then what are we doing a july one and then are we doing one in the fall or are we doing a weird one like boom we're doing it in march and then nope we're still keeping the same schedule and the next one's in november again like what are we what are we doing here just want to just want to know what we're doing here i'm a yeah. schedule i'm a planner Help me out. It, it's in March. 
which when they I had an idea that the second major was going to be cancelled. Like I had heard stuff that it wasn't going to be going ahead, and I couldn't figure out why. And then CS2 comes out, and it makes all makes sense now. <laughs> um, I could have seen a world where they would have given the major to ESL and just done IEM Katowice a month later because Poland I don't think it. that would have been that bad. But I that do would... like the fact it's PGL because PGL with a lot of time to prepare and a lot of pressure on their shoulders do knock it out of the park. Stockholm had a lot of pressure as a major. And they fucking yes. smashed it. Yes. And it was the same with Antwerp. Antwerp was sick. So I am happy that they get that major because it, with more time to prepare, they are going to settle in. I think well. they do. It's very funny because PGL just come out and they're like, we're doing majors. We don't give a shit about tournaments. Majors only, baby. They are the majors only club. Like, that is yeah. what they do. They don't give a shit about anything else. And it's very funny. It works out for them. This is what they do. And, and they're succeeding, and they're going to do it in cool and interesting places. I thought Antwerp was kind of a curveball as, as a location, but I loved it. And I think that, I mean, I don't know. Copenhagen just makes sense. Makes sense. It's a big hub. What's going to suck, though, is... And and I better see it on Twitter. I better see all the Reddit threads. I want to see so many people complaining about Danish fans. I can't. Charlotte's going to qualify. Hope... It's fine. <laughs> it's CS two. You can't spam smokes. That's fucking Glaive's whole thing. They're not gonna. They're not even gonna. They're gonna be tier three by the time CS two comes out. Oh god. Um, well, we'll we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Oh fuck it. They're not gonna uh, we did put out an article though. Very sad. It. This is now going to mark six years. Uh, since the last mer- uh, major held in North America, um, even accounting for uh, the delay due to uh, COVID-19, uh, this will be the eighth major, uh, which is the longest run because there was originally a major held in, like the eighth major was MLG Columbus. Um, and then it's now going to be like, I don't even know what number this is going to be, but it's going to be, I think like the 20th edition of it or something. It's going to be crazy. So it's, it's, it's a long time without America. Do we think that at the time of America, hosting majors is over? I am Alabama. Um, <laughs> um, Come down I, to I Birmingham, baby. Get on Tuscaloosa. I am Tuscaloosa at the University of Alabama. Um, Stunna, Stunna is the one. Stunna is just going to host the whole thing. He's actually going to play. Let it him on bring himself. out the trophy. <laughs> oh my God. Um, no, I don't think it's necessarily over. I think. Last spring finals will be a massive indicator of if we're going to see more tournaments yeah. in the U.S. If that goes off without yeah. a hitch, if there's no visa issues, if there's no issues in general with oh, attendance. Oh, there will be visa issues. If there there's no be. major visa issues, because every tournament has issues with people, players getting in, for the most part. And look, at, look at me in the face and tell me that somehow the United States of America, considering the current uh, war that's happening in Eastern Europe, are going to look at not not as sincere and say, oh, Russians coming into the capital? Absolutely. That's totally going to be comfortable to us. There's no way. There's no way. I don't, I like... But North, yeah, I guess with America, maybe, but North America isn't just the United States. Like, we can get Canada. Canada would be fun. Canada Canada makes so much sense as a major spot. Canada, a Toronto, a Toronto one would be really, really cool. I would like a Toronto one. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I think it's, I think all of it's going to be weird. It's going to be interesting. We're going to have to see how it works. I just hope that an American team is there since I'm already booking travel to go there for a few days. And for, but what also sucks is like for us, like as a North American coverage outlet, like how much are we going to care about an event that's going on that none of our teams are at? Exactly. Oh God! I have to. I'll have to figure out all of our travel and coverage plans for that one. That's that's going to be fun. That's on my to do list. Um, okay. Any anything else in NA domestic recap? Um, MIBR winning uh, ECL again. They're just they're insane. I have no words for MIBR. Got that dog like, in them, dude. They they are insane. And the only reason that Payne wasn't in the playoffs was because they had Pro League, which yeah. sucks. Happens. Also, I saw that tweet from, I believe it was Swisher. It looked real unfortunate. It's like the power going out in map two, map three. Oh, yeah, last night. So I think we also, got, I also kind of wanted to write an article about it, but he said he had the ping issues and his, his tweet said that in the snow, he had to go turn on a power generator to make sure that he could finish out map three. Like, but that, but that was against the Melbourne qualifiers. That was not, uh, which was, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it just seems, but that's also the other part. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. I am Stunna's backyard. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I, 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 actually, I really we should send we should just send that I mean, to Stunna. Yeah, I'd be like, Stunna, we found the next location for the major. Oh yeah, not a problem. Oh my um, god. But yeah, no, that was the other part of the domestic side was uh, E.G. Black did beat HK to qualify for Melbourne. And yeah. it just seems like ATK can't catch a damn break, man. No, no, that was uh, because what was it? They, they didn't, they lost the finals and then they lost these finals. Like losing two finals back to back is just, it's tough. But I think for the team overall, they have a solid core of four players. And to continue to, to reach these levels of NA Heights is pretty admirable. Like it's pretty good. Uh, yeah. And and hopefully we can see these guys find a solid fifth. Maybe it's Rack. Maybe this is your team. Like they were a pug. I don't think they had any expectations of making it to the RMR. I genuinely think if they don't make it to the RMR, they might look at each other and go, "Yeah, what if we just split our ways?" Because turns out this ATK thing is really cool. Like, could happen. We don't know. If Yer makes the major, it's gonna be a fucking joke if for Yer this makes region. The major, God, I I did message. I forgot who I messaged, but I was like. And you guys, please fucking come up with a good name and please send in good stickers. Because I think they had to send in the stickers at this point. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, I guess. Yeah, that's all I've got for, for any of that stuff. Um, I don't have, have too much to say. I think it's been a great week. We have a lot of stuff going on. CS2 is uh, doing wonders. I'm hoping that they can give it to me uh, quite soon. Um, what about you? Do you want to play any CS2? Um, yeah, I'm, I keep checking it. I don't have it. Uh, I was talking to someone who, I don't, I don't know if I could say, it, but look, maybe getting it. I don't know, maybe playing it. Um, I'm excited to play it because I want to test out the new features and stuff. Yeah. But my big conclusion is take a moment of silence. Rest in peace, Davenport. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Let's talk about that real quick. God, can't believe we just forgot about that. So Davenport fucking died. Just died. The whole program is, I don't, they are rebuilding. The whole, everyone's leaving. And yeah. what's, and, and there's a lot of things that we've been hearing. Um, and we're getting all, uh, we know that Lucas is conducting the interview. So if anyone's watching that was part of Davenport, you know, reach out to us with, with your story. Reach out to us with, with things you want to say. I mean, the big story here is that these kids went to Davenport to play Counter-Strike. And they thought they were joining this great program. And, like, people are changing left and right. It seems like there wasn't a lot of consistency. Support and financial support had seemed like there's just been, like, a lot of communi miscommunication somehow and, and false promises. And I'm concerned for the people that are getting student loans to go to this school to do this and then have left, like, a month later. And they're still on the hook for the entire semester. I know, I think it was Dane Joris literally took out student loans to go to Davenport to go to the school for the whole semester. He joined like a month or a month ago or so. And just everyone's gone. He's there alone. And and he's there physically at the campus, but that's it. And, and it's like student loans well, what are, are dumb we doing? Shit. Student loans are dumb as shit in your country. So it's it's student loans are insane. The whole situation is insane. Um, I don't want to say too much because I think that a lot of comments coming out of it was really hot and heavy. So I think my my things are doing a big post mortem once once we come out with yeah because we're going to try and come out with a big story of of everyone and everything a, a full think, rundown kind of way full rundown uh, timelines all that stuff. So we'll we'll be covering that when it when it comes out um, and we'll try and give our do our best uh, to do it justice. So I, I know I we, I know we tried to, to keep it to an hour as well, but someone in chat mentioned Stewie being back, so we should probably no. Touch I'm it. not talking about Stewie being back. <laughs> he's not I even don't back. care. Me neither. You know what? You know why I don't care because he's not coming back. He's not. I don't seriously believe that he is going to look at Counter Strike. He's not going to join a community that hates him. He's not going to join a community that looks at him and is like, "You fucked up and you destroyed everything good." I don't think any organization has room for him. Who's picking him up? Genuinely, you look at me and tell me who's picking up Stewie Two K. Nobody. No salary organization is going to look at Stewie K and say, "Here's twenty grand," because guess who the organization that can pay twenty grand? Complexity, Evil Geniuses, and Liquid. Guess who's not picking up Stewie's UK? Not Evil Geniuses. And you think Complexity wants that headache? 
Absolutely not. You would think Liquid is going to drop anyone for a guy that's been out for like two fucking weeks? No. He's got no one. He's got nothing. He's not coming back. Stop. Stop theorizing about it. Hey, automa- automatic said, let's run it back in the Twitter response. No! It, it, it's the single funniest tweet because I can't remember who responded to it. It's like, he fucking, I think it was Jeff. He was like, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff went ahead and basically was like, my brother in Christ, he destroyed your team. He ran your team into the ground. Uh, maybe they could just talk it over over Starbucks. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> you fucking, I hate that. Anyways. That's going to be our show this week. Um, catch all of our coverage next week when we're in Mexico. I have a lot of work to do this week uh, to make sure that our whole team is prepared. We'll be providing you the best content as well. Follow us on the Instagram and TikTok where we'll be doing some vlog style stuff and, and other things like that. So it'll be good. It's going to be great. Are you amped? Are you amped for the RMR? No. Like I said, it's just if the five teams don't qualify, I'm fucking disappointed. But... Oh, God, I hate it. All right. That's all for me. <laughs> I'm going to go watch Payne and MIBR and go write up uh, the recap from that. So I will catch you all in about two weeks and where we will do our RMR postmortem. So then see you later.